Hey guys, it's Tony here from Bikeberry. The next thing up is brakes. In the last video, what we did is we greased everything and we tightened everything and it's really good to go, okay? Well, now I pulled the wheels off of it because we're getting ready to put brakes on. Now, motorized bicycles, motorized bikes, what we like them to do is go and we like them to stop. That's the two main things we need to focus on. How does it go efficiently and how does it stop efficiently? So what I did for my first build is I put a front disc brake on it and I put a rear caliper brake on it, okay? So what we have here, if you look at the table, first up is our rim that holds the disc brake. You can mount it right on there. It's super safe, super secure, best way to go. So I'm gonna utilize that. We got the super awesome, check this out. It's machined aluminum caliper holder, right? This bracket, caliper bracket. Isn't that awesome? It even has a little notch right there to sit right in the forks in the right position. Can't go wrong. Disc brake caliper, super awesome. Got nice big pads in there. These are, these are the real deal. Then our rear brake caliper, classic, right? Disc brake for the front. You can see on it, it has arrows on it right there. That tells you what direction to go. That's pretty cool. And we got cables. Then my favorite is a dual pull brake lever. This way you can run your cable from the front and the back into the same lever and put it right on the same side as your throttle. That way you got brakes on one side and you got um, your clutch on the other. Isn't that awesome? Let's go, let's get everything together. So the first thing we're gonna focus on is the rear brake. You can see that we have this crossbar here. That's where we're gonna mount our rear brake caliper on. This one's pretty simple. Now, yours may not have a hole in the back of it, so you may need to drill that out. Not a big deal, just make it the same size as the bolt, you'll be good to go. All right, for this rear one, what we wanna focus on, you see how it's got this stud here? If you look at these, they're curved, see that? I'm gonna put one of them on there like that because that way it sits on the bar just right. Then we have the second one and the washer. Okay, I'm stuck on my finger, huh? And then the nut, it's a nylon lock nut. That's all the parts we need. So with our curved washer on there, we're gonna put it right on that bar. So as you can see, look from this angle sits around the bar goes with that curve so to hold it in place securely all right so we have all three of our pieces of our fastener here we're going to put the curved one in first then our flat washer and then we're going to put our lock nut on there and tighten it all down so i just Finger tighten it until I can't do it anymore. Use your little crescent wrench. Works really well. Get it snug kind of close. Then you'll need to come back here and adjust it to the center position on your tire. That way when you pull it close, it'll close equally on both sides. So that looks pretty good. So really the same distance from here has the same distance from here, okay? Now I'll hold it with my left hand as I tighten it up with my right, just to make sure nothing moves. And it's exactly where we want it to stay as we finish out connecting it to the lever. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on our front brake. This is a disc brake with a caliper bracket that we're gonna mount to the front fork. Now, if you noticed, I pointed out earlier, if you noticed, it's got arrows right there and right there. That tells you which direction to put it on the rim, okay? And which way is forward facing. So as you can see, it has six mounting screws that go right into the hub. They're the Allen type. So really simply, you need your Allen key.
Okay, now that they're all in, I'm gonna go around and snug them all up. So you wanna do a star pattern, like crisscross. So you're gonna do this one first, then you're gonna jump to that one. Okay, then you're gonna go back to this one over here. And you're gonna go to this one. And you go opposite, and then for your final one. So I wanna talk about this guy. When I first got into motorized bikes, I knew that I wanted more stopping power than what the rear brake could give me. So, and I knew an easy addition would be a disc brake up front and a caliper brake in the back. That way I would have three brakes. Well, when I was looking up adapters and trying to find what would work the best, mostly what I saw were these like clamp on ones where they would clamp around the fork and they were just these thin pieces of metal. Now, look at this one. They've like, this is like a game changer here. It's the right offset right away. It has enough clearance for the center, you know, the hub. And then it's got this killer notch right on the side that goes in that slot on the fork. It's, it's like makes it effortless. So let's get this thing on there. So as you can see, this mounts right here, just like that. So the bracket goes on this way, put that notch to the outside. Then you have the keyed washer, top of that, and then your nut. So we'll slide that right up on there. Remember that stays to the inside. You're gonna flip it up. You gotta kinda of spread the forks out just a little bit. Just to stick it on there. Like that. Okay. So as you can see, that notch is in there. Tighten that up. Over to the other side. Get that washer in there proper. Yeah, that's how we'll start lining everything up. So one thing that you've probably noticed is that there's no tire on here. Right now, all I'm worried about is getting the brakes working really well. Once I'm done with that, then I'll go ahead and put the tire on. You also notice on the back, when I'm trying to get this set up with, with the rear brake on here, I don't have the chain connected at all, right? So the pedals are free to, to spin. That way I can go in here and I can spin the tire and see how to adjust everything without any interference from the chain or anything like that. So that's my focus right now is making sure all the mechanics of it, the brakes, the hubs and everything is working without any interaction from the chain or any other parts. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll connect the chain, then I'll put the front tire on and all that. So the one thing I thought was interesting, and I thought I would show it to you here, is that the washers right here, they have curved tops. That way, you can really fine tune this. And if you look this way, there's a slot instead of just a straight hole. That way you can adjust it almost all directions. That's pretty cool, huh? To mount the caliper on here, all you do is slip it over and hold it up here like that. There's two bolts that are Allen bolts. And the caliper itself is threaded. So you just screw into that. Same with this guy right here. And the holes are really, the tolerances are tight, so you should be fine. Just going in there and tighten it down all the way. So to get this seated properly, you want to look straight down at the top of the disc and where it goes between those pads and tighten it down so there's space between both pads. Then you just tighten it down. That's your starting point. 
So our final component is the dual pole brake lever. Now, if you notice, it has a center um, pole position and then it pulls on each side there at the same time. Isn't that cool? Works really well. So the dual pole brake lever is gonna go on the same side as your throttle, okay, the right side. You're just gonna kinda guess where to put it for now because we're not gonna worry about the throttle or anything yet. We're gonna focus solely on the brakes. That works pretty good. So at this point, we have our front brake mounted, we have our rear brake mounted, and we have our lever mounted. So we need to run two cables, one for the front, one for the rear. That way we get everything connected together and then we'll get it in its starting position where everything works and then we can go in and adjust it. So I flipped this up because it's a little bit tricky. Now, if you unscrew this a couple turns and turn this guy back a little bit, you can see there's a slot there. And there's also a slot Right there, see how it runs all the way through? Well, that's for your cable, your barrel to slide in. So once it's through there like that and it's staying in there, then you wanna turn it so it won't come out. And remember, it doesn't matter which brake you have go into which one. They both work exactly the same. So we're gonna turn this out until the slot's exposed. We're gonna push the little barrel in there. Pull it out like that. Now turn it back all the way. That'll stay. So on the back here, there's two things to check. I screw this adjustment screw all the way in, and then we're gonna feed it through that bolt. There's a little hole in the side of it and that's what captures the cable. So now that we fed it through there, we're gonna squeeze it. We're gonna pull it all the way. And we'll just start there and tighten it from there. So the part that holds the cable on here, see this clip on this screw? So it literally slides in that see the spot there that's where it goes into and it grabs it and squeezes it up in there like that all right so we'll run the cable to the front brake it's going to slide in there like that make sure this is all the way down and then you're going to this is kind of tricky you got to push this up and you got to Fit it into that slot. See how that worked? You're gonna push this all the way up, pull the cable down, and then tighten. Again, this is just gonna get you in the ballpark. Okay, so go ahead and give it a squeeze with your lever. Same with the back, make sure it's working. At this point, just grab a couple zip ties and get everything so it's kind of temporarily fastened. I wouldn't worry too much about proper, you know, like perfect placement at this point. You're just trying to get it so things aren't flopping around and you can start fine tuning your brake system. So to fine tune everything, what I do is I bounce back and forth between the front and the back wheel. I spin them and I listen to it. How much is it rubbing? Then I go in and make adjustments. You can make adjustments to where it's mounted here and kind of get it as perfect as possible. I don't think you'll ever get it to where it's noise free in the beginning because everything's so tight. You need some break in. So a break in period is really important. But like I said, I would spin it and just listen to it and make those adjustments. This one's pretty good. So the next thing I do is I hold on to the brake lever. 
I spin the rim and then I squeeze the brake lever. And then I would do the same for the back tire also, okay? And then go through and adjust both of them. But at this point, they're both working really well. I still have a ton of adjustment because all of these are all the way in. So I could tighten it up over time. I can reset the cables. So you're just gonna have to work with it and get it so it works optimally for you. This is a really good moment. I'm excited for you. Now you'll know how to mount really good quality brakes on your motorized bike. So this is a step that I recommend doing even before you get your engine mounted on there. So what we'll do is we'll add all the links below of all the parts that I used that made this super, super simple. And then uh, go in the comments and let me know if you would like a more detailed uh, adjustment video on setting up the cables and making sure that they're exactly right. Please let me know that. I'd love to help you out if that's something that you're stuck on. Also, I wanted to invite you to our Facebook group. It's a whole community of everybody helping each other. So now that you have knowledge on how to put your brakes on properly, go do it and then share your build in the Facebook group. Lots of people are there to, to root you on and help whenever you're stuck on anything. It's an amazing community. So I thank you so much for watching this video. Go work on your build. Let's roll.